cloud because the cloud is based on immutable infrastructure. And we're gonna, I'm gonna talk uh, a little bit into what is immutable and immutable. Uh, but the, the great thing about it is that now that we can build this infrastructure, we can also build uh, detections and we can do detections uh, as code. And uh, when, we had, when we mix these two things together, we can test the detections, uh, see if they work or not. Isn't that we're past the time where we had to basically sometimes ship detections that sometimes um, um, it was impossible to get data. It's not that we have taken away that, there's still issues with it. But now uh, with the availability of this tool, uh, pretty much anybody, you, you need a laptop that if you want, if you don't want to pay AWS, we, we're mostly based in, on AWS, uh, with a, a laptop with eight gigabytes or 16 gigabytes of RAM, uh, you will be able to run this. So um, uh, to finalize the uh, this block attack range definition, we do have this integrated into what we call a, a, a continuous integration, continuous delivery, which basically we test our um, detections, detections that are created on the go, detections that are in the past. Uh, I recently um, wrote a blog about creating a zero logon uh, detection based on um, the, the, the attack range. And uh, I can give you that link later and I can show it to you. Uh, that that blog actually ended up being shown in uh, mentioned in the uh, Department of Homeland Security Emergency Directive for zero logon. So uh, this is something that you can use. You don't have to pay anything. You 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 have to pay something to to AWS if you use it. But if you do the uh, the local one, you don't have to pay anything. Bandwidth basically. Um, so here's the uh, attack range. Um, and uh, I think I show you that it's right here, and this is where you clone it. So let's talk a little bit about the architecture of the attack range. Uh, the attack range, uh, basically, um, there are several architectures. Right, the, this this one is sort of like the general one that we use, and the main branch of it, um, where we uh, build it and configure it using Ansible. And then we have a uh, setup in AWS um, that has Active Directory. It has a Windows Server. Uh, there is, uh, there's some work on OS Query and uh, likely Debian flavor uh, Linux. Uh, you can also get in a Splunk server, you get that always by default. And you get a MITRE uh, Caldera framework install with the agents already running into the machines that you selected. I'm gonna show you that in, in a few minutes. And uh, you can actually expand it and you can select uh, Splunk Phantom if you wanna play with Phantom. Uh, you're gonna need a um, account in the Phantom community, but you can still use it. And then, of course, we we had to add it because it's a, a an essential tool uh, that most of researchers use, uh, which is uh, Kali Linux. So in Kali Linux, usually it's not difficult to uh, download code and replicate an exploit. Um, and that was the the goal. The goal of us doing this was uh, I've been a researcher for for over a decade now, and um, I know how hard it is to create data. And uh, I actually have a lot of um, gear, if you want to call it. Uh, and I have a lot of um, storage where I have tons of VMs from very old operating systems, newer operating systems, complete domain controller, Active Directory, uh, print service, you name it, because there was simply no other way to do this. The only way, thanks to virtualization, and, and that sort of says a little bit how old I am. We went from, oh, we needed, I remember still walking into the rack server air and asking, can we fit my research server there? And they tell me, no, we can't do that. Uh, so we went from there to, 
being able to use or create virtual machines by hypervisors and then as a VMware workstation or virtual uh, box, which we still use, by the way, in, in our local range. Uh, and now we can actually deploy all this by basically configuring a file and then this basically will deploy, will be connected, there will be an internal network, uh, they will be able to ping each other, uh, that setting is already covered, um, and uh, uh, the credentials will be configured, the atomic red team will be configured, and you can execute the attack straight from the command line. Uh, you had to spend hours um, uh, creating this. If you want to do the, the local one, it will take a little bit, I had to tell you that. But uh, uh, it's something that you can keep or you can reuse. Now, one of the reasons why we decided to create this and use this in the cloud, there's, there's certainly a, um, a trend in uh, Silicon Valley uh, to use, uh, take advantage of what is called ephemeral uh, immutable infrastructure. So ephemeral means we use this, we replicate the attack, I destroy it. And actually, uh, we're going to talk about that in, in some of the commands. Um, and it's called immutable because basically this infrastructure is usually patched and set by the cloud provider. Uh, the mutable infrastructure is the server old school. When we were inside the perimeter, we have our servers. We had to patch them. We had to apply uh, all kinds of uh, updates and, 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 sec and security patches. Uh, when we go to the cloud, we're dealing with uh, basically platform as a service, uh, this, this for the most part is immutable and uh, should be used in a ephemeral way. Meaning when you're using this in the cloud, uh, you never leave this on. We, we don't do it. We basically, what kind of attack am I trying to uh, replicate? Okay, well, this is this type of attack. I deploy my range and then I destroy it. That's it. I don't keep this. Why? Because it costs money among certain things. And second, because sometimes because of the setup, uh, the machines may get popped, for example, and that has happened. And then that may, uh, you may get yelled at by the <laughs> AWS administrators. But uh, the intention of this is not to keep it running. This is, again, it's, it's ephemeral. You use it, you test it, and then once you're done, you destroy it. You need it again, you build it again. It's right there. It won't go anywhere. So uh, let's get a little bit into the specifics of what we have in every machine, right? Because it is important for you to understand when we're gonna when we're gonna go into the part of the detection, what is it, what what type of data is that that we're looking at? So again, we build this via Terraform going to uh, AWS. And Ansible basically does a lot of the configuration of the machines. Um, in, in the Windows machines, we have Sysmon. We actually use a very verbose uh, Sysmon policy. So you're gonna get all tons of uh, logs. Uh, we have uh, OS Query. Uh, we have Caldera. We have Atomic Red Team. We have Splunk Streams, which is a, um, a packet. Uh, sort of a packet uh, DPI, the packet inspection. Uh, there's also a seek uh, module. Uh, we're not gonna see it today, but seek for those who, who, who don't know is what it was, it used to be called bro uh, IDS. So, so um, you can also use seek and uh, take a look at the detections and take a look at the, uh, uh, at the packets uh, that are coming and that are generated uh, from the attack range. And then, uh, of course, you have the Splunk Universal Forwarder, which is what sends all the stuff from the Windows machine to uh, the Splunk server, which is mainly where all the data ends up at. So uh, let's continue. So, so basically, uh, what do you do before you run this? You had to install the OS dependencies, you have to configure Terraform, which is usually is, is uh, Terraform space in it. You had to, uh, the configuration in the attack range, uh, dot conf. That's, that's, that's very important. 
and then you simply type uh, Python attack range uh, action, although we changed this and now it's basically A dash A bill. And then here, basically once we're done, we do A simulate um, the target, which will be the machine that we'll be looking at, and then we run a detection. And then we can run a Caldera operation if you want. So for those of you who are following, um, here are the two main links that you uh, need to uh, pay attention. One of them is the um, Ubuntu setup. Let's see if we can take a look at this pretty quick. Uh, and then here's a complete guide. We try to make this as easy as we can, guys. If you, if you have any issues, if there are things that we need to change, please let us know. Um, and we'll be glad to, to do our best to fix it. You can, you can always create a PR too. Uh, you can create a, a pull request. This is an open source project. Um, and as you can see, uh, there's, there's, uh, this actually was with help from uh, people that were testing it. Uh, here's the steps that you have to use uh, and perform in order to build it. And then if we go back, uh, there's also the Mac OS X uh, installation, which is of course what we, we pretty much build it. Uh, uh, but why am I showing you this? Uh, for many reasons. Uh, of course, we, we want you to, to do a flawless and easy installation, but I know that there are times where uh, people issue uh, Windows machines or the on, they only have Windows machines. And one of the, the, way around, the, the way around that using the range is if you're using AWS, is basically doing it through a Ubuntu machine. So when you go on the Ubuntu machine, uh, virtual machine, you can perform all these steps and uh, do it from there because we, we, we don't support Windows as a hosting platform. Uh, so you're gonna have to do it either from a Windows, so from an Ubuntu VM, or uh, you can do it for a Mac OS. Um, uh, we have people that have been very successful doing this. And uh, we, unfortunately we do not support um, sort of a, the, the hypervisor inception, meaning you create a Ubuntu machine and then you run Vagrant and, and VirtualBox in it. So you have a hypervisor inside a hypervisor. We don't support that. We, ha we know people that have been successful at that. Uh, basically they have like this monster Windows laptops, but it's not supported. So th those are the options that you have right now. Or basically if you have a, a, a cheap uh, VPS or VPC and you're doing the cloud one, you basically SSH into it, make sure you, you uh, choose Debian or Ubuntu and most likely all of this will work. So let's continue. Okay, so now um, this is something that for us has, uh, has presented a challenge. And it has presented a challenge because, you know, honestly guys, we didn't want to do an, a local one. We started with a local one. Um, I remember almost a year or something ago when, when, when I went back to Splunk. And then we realized that if I'm going to have a Windows server, a Windows client, uh, another Windows server, a Kali machine, a Phantom, and Splunk, it was gonna eat all the, uh, uh, the memory on my local machine. And in fact, at one point, and I, and I, before you build your local one, if that is what you wanna do, and actually, let's go ahead and uh, uh, show you that as well. Um, attack range. There's actually a link in the main one. There's an attack range local, right? Which is right here. And you would not be using anything in the cloud. 
you don't have to worry about uh, setting up uh, Terraform. You don't have to worry about downloading the SDK, the AWS CLI. And again, there is right here, all the instructions. I'll get to this in a minute. I don't want people to freak out and say, I don't want to do AWS, which is something that has happened. Uh, and uh, by popular demand, we basically had to branch out. Why did we have to branch out? Because here's where things can, can get confusing. We basically realized that, that we had to maintain two branches, one for the local and one for the cloud. And then we made it even more complicated and created a cloud only, which I will be showing you today. Uh, and we're gonna, we're actually gonna use a, 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 a brand new uh, attack framework uh, that I'm not sure if some of you guys have heard, it's called Leonidas. Uh, so we, I, hopefully if the demo docs are good to me, I'll show it to you. Um, but let's go back of why we had to branch. We had to branch basically because we found out that, um, you know, any standard researcher or, or uh, um, defender, you usually will have a, a, a device that has either eight to 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now that the, the it's becoming cheaper, maybe some of you are getting 32 gigabytes of RAM, good for you, I don't have that. Uh, and I realized at one point that when I have four or five virtual machines, basically my computer will, will, will halt. So then we realized, hmm, it's probably not a good idea. Uh, and plus the idea was also to destroy it, right? You, you destroy it and build it back up. When you build these machines locally, they take, they take space. It takes time because you're gonna have to download all those ISOs, don't worry about it. The script does it for you. The script basically, all you have to do is you have to install Vagrant. You have to install um, uh, uh, Vagrant and VirtualBox. Make sure you have the latest versions of it. Uh, uh, clone the repo. Make sure you have the, the actual dependencies and basically build it with the action that I just showed you. This is, this is, used to be the old command, by the way, but um, uh, it will build it. And uh, how, and we're gonna get into that in a minute, what is it that you tell it to build is all in the attack underscore range.conf. Uh, so that is the local one. And then we have the cloud one for endpoint, which is how we're calling it now. Uh, which does sort of a similar uh, infrastructure. But remember, there are two differences here, and this just happened to me with zero logon. When we try to replicate zero logon at the cloud, the Windows machine obviously was already patched. When we try to replicate on local, it was not. And it was not because that is an ISO that we selected. So that's something that you may wanna consider uh, uh, different wise, because again, we go back to the concept of what's mutable and immutable. And uh, of course, this um, um, cloud providers, they already, they already have patched it by the time we, we started to test it. So um, this is uh, pretty much the architecture. And uh, let's move on. So I think I spoke already about this. Um, here's a little more detail uh, of some of the things that we have. We have in Splunk, for example, we have uh, the uh, ESCU. The ESCU is the content updates and where we actually push as a team uh, our detections. All of this is free. You can download this, you can build it, and it will be right there for you. Uh, there is an actual uh, nice dashboard, which I will show you that actually uh, will display what uh, simulations you have executed and then, and then we can go back and look at the data and, and here are all the machines that you can uh, potentially have right uh, for a domain controller you you can choose for example if you don't want a domain controller you can have a server and the server will act like it was a client for example um, a, there is a Windows workstation uh, setting, which is, I believe at this point is only for local. We couldn't do that in AWS. 
um, a Kali machine, a Splunk server, and a Phantom server if you're uh, if you want to play with it, right? So so if any of you is, is taking classes or uh, want to get introduced to a sort uh, sort of technology, you can actually download this right now, and it won't cost you other than your work and broadband uh, to set it up. So like I said before, uh, most of the stuff is on attack underscore range uh, dot com, which is where we're going to select what, what to install. So here's a little bit of a, a, um, a cost est estimation for AWS environment if you're planning to have it. Again, my personal experience is that uh, this is ephemeral, you shouldn't, you should destroy it once, once you're done. Uh, if you, you can pause it, by the way, you can pause these machines and then bring it back so they, they don't have to be running or showing services uh, on the internet if you don't want to. Obviously, if you're using AWS, the use of security groups is highly recommended. Um, and uh, uh, you can actually use the estimated uh, costs. It doesn't cost that much, to be honest, uh, but some people don't want to pay uh, much and uh, or need to allocate budget so uh, you can actually uh, take a look at it. All right, so let's start getting more into what is it that we're going to get here. In this case, um, what we're going to be doing um, is going to be registered mainly in five uh, in actually uh, three indexes, sorry. So we have mainly five uh, source types, uh, but we do have three main indexes. So in the index equal win, and you will see this when, I, when, I, when I'm able to execute the, the simulation and look at the logs, we're gonna see the Windows event logs. And in Windows event logs, you're gonna get the event IDs, um, mostly for uh, security. Um, and we actually enable the audit in, uh, within the, uh, the machine. So that way it's very verbose uh, and you're gonna, you're gonna have quite a bit of uh, events. Uh, we also have a system on policy, which is very verbose as well. We, Sometimes, remember guys, when, when, we're, when we're using this tool, and we're replicating a brand new exploit or something that we're not, um, I guess, familiar with, uh, we don't know what we're looking at. So the most we get, the better for you to come up with a detection or to understand what is it that this new exploit, this new vulnerability is all about. So we, you're also gonna have PowerShell logs you're also gonna have uh, network logs with uh, a stream, which is set up as well. And uh, uh, you're gonna have attack simulation logs from red team. Uh, I believe you might still get Calera, some of it. Um, I will go over uh, later on. So now you know that. So that way when you log in your Splunk, you know what to look for. Uh, we do have now a deployment that uh, actually has a uh, Kubernetes cluster for those who are interested in uh, uh, looking at Kubernetes. Uh, we're actually deploying a WordPress and also there's a serverless deployment which I haven't used yet, but you can, you can also use it. And it consists of a Lambda, a REST API, uh, of course uses S3 and uh, Dynamo. Uh, DV. Uh, I'm not really familiar with this and uh, I plan to, to explore it in the future. We haven't really gotten much of a request to use this, but it's right there if you want to use it. Uh, okay, and this we're going to see today. Uh, this is a new attack range local. An attack range local uh, by popular demand because people, some people didn't want to do anything with uh, the cloud you're gonna be able to have a Windows server, domain controller, that Windows server, and uh, you can have, uh, we're still working on the Linux endpoint, I don't think it's released yet, but you can have your Kali machine. 
and you're going to have your Splunk server and your uh, Caldera server, as well as Phantom if you decide to deploy it. Uh, did I come down? Okay. Um, here is the uh, configure, uh, the configuring steps. If you're doing Terraform, um, you can see most of this on the page. Uh, you're going to need Terraform if you're doing uh, AWS. Uh, it is important that you download the AWS CLI, and it is important that you uh, set up uh, the correct key pairs. Without the key pairs, you the key pairs, you will not be able to connect to your machines. And you will get errors, and that's usually is something that I need to emphasize, because usually when we do these workshops and people start building up these ranges, we get a lot of complaints that you get, uh, I think it's a 400 error. And the 400 error usually indicates that the, the keys don't match. And because the keys don't match, you're not gonna be able to connect to your uh, machines. So let's see what we got here. Uh, I believe we talked about this. Uh, some of the other stuff that we can look in the Splunk server uh, we have the protections as, as I suggested. Um, at ESCU, we also have the machine learning toolkit pre-installed in it. The UI uh, is at port 8000. Um, and you can also SSH into it. It's a, a Ubuntu machine. And we already, I already told you about the three main win and attack, which is the main indexes that you're going to look at. Uh, in some cases, we actually have a Splunk ES uh, in it, uh, and uh, um, you can use it for a while. And same thing with, with Phantom. Uh, when we look at our machines, these are things that you're going to keep. Like we're talking about the local one, right? These are machines that you're going to keep. These are machines that you can actually RDP into them. You can modify these things, you can exploit them, you can reboot them, you can do everything you want with it. On the Atomic Rec team, which is an, it's a big part of what we do, um, we do attack uh, simulation, right? And the attack simulations are based on what they call atomics, and the atomics are based on uh, TTPs that are um, publicly available at uh, a tag.mitre.org. So if you go here, uh, probably a lot of you guys are already familiar with this. You see a lot of, um, basically this is a distribution of TTPs and a lot of this notice that there is a technique, right? And we're gonna be performing this techniques uh, and some of the sub techniques um, in a few moments. Um, so it is important for you to understand the method theory of this. Where is this coming? This is coming from basically the replication and the simulation of these tools coming from uh, the attack framework. Uh, although, because you have now this infrastructure, you can choose to do whatever you want. I basically replicated zero log on uh, with this the same setup that you're about to see and uh, uh, that's the purpose of it um, I'm not going to talk about Packer this is sort of deprecated and it's for certain specific people who wants to use it uh, one more time I would like to say this depending if you're using the AWS uh, you have to enter the right key name if you don't enter the right key name, your machines will not be able to connect. You will not be able to log in into your machines. And to make it even clearer, here's a picture. So you had to go on AWS, you had to create your keys, and you had to name your keys. And when you go into Conf, your keys had to match. Your keys, sorry, had to match the name. The keys don't match the name. You won't. You won't be. Able, you will get errors. Following that, you had to configure 
your um, instances. So you do that by going into, let me see if I have, I got stuff here. Are you guys still able to see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. So just to, to, to show you right here, um, what we're looking at right here, uh, just for a second, because I wanted to show this, is the, um, the attack range cloud. So in the attack range cloud, if you go here and you go nano, I, I hate then, sorry, um, cloud attack underscore range.conf. This is what I was trying to show you. Uh, in this case, we're looking at the password, for example. We're looking at where the keys are. You had to put the keys. You can see specifically where um, uh, the apps are being downloaded from. You can change this if you want. Uh, you can see where the binaries, the version of the binaries are downloaded from. You can change this if you want. Um, you are likely to may want to set your own for certain things. We have found uh, companies actually. Let me uh, get out of here, and do another tab. And then uh, let's see what I got. I got all kinds of ranges here, guys, but uh, let's see if we can do attack range. Let's do attack range. Nice. So if I go here, um, here's the white list. This is something that we're actually uh, on the newest versions, they're gonna force you to enter your IP address. And the reason uh, that we're doing this is because we got tired of being yelled by uh, the AWS people. So basically, we're gonna force you to, to basically set up, the script will basically set up a security group that will only allow your IP address, you can go to what is my IP and do your IP cider, right? You can put in your cider. So that way you don't have people uh, poking around. Now, if you want to set up a honeypot, that's a different story. You can modify this and uh, you should be fine. So remember you to input your region, your passwords. I always forget my passwords and because this is ephemeral, Usually, you know, um, if somebody's running some sort of a brute force, it would take them a while to find it, uh, and it will be destroyed by the time I'm done. Uh, here's the uh, the TAs that we pull. Uh, so you can see specifically every single thing we're doing. Uh, the uh, data sets, actually, you can actually import the data sets from uh, a boss of the sock if you want. Uh, some of you may be familiar with uh, Boss of the Sock. Uh, I had had the privilege of um, uh, being part of the Boss of the Sock team. I was in, in basically in the, in the floor and I never seen over a thousand people with computers playing a, a defensive capture of the flag. It's very impressive. And uh, the guys do an amazing uh, job putting all these data sets together. So you can actually obtain these data sets uh, and import them into your uh, attack range. Uh, the community uh, username, like I told you for Phantom, you're gonna need it. Um, and then here, the window settings, the username, the password, um, here's where we're downloading the, the Sysmon and the universal forwarder. Uh, you would also see the Sysmon uh, template. I told you we use uh, this uh, template, which is incredibly robust. It's pretty good. It's the best in the industry so far. Um, and then we have other things like the MLTK, if you want to install it, DSP, which is a new product that we're, uh, Splunk is developing. Uh, so this can get, guys, this can get very, 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 very complicated. Uh, if you if you want to, you can make it as easy or complicated as you want. There's a lot of code here, a lot of code, um, and uh, here's a uh, simulation techniques, uh, which again I'm going to show you in just uh, in just a few minutes. 
um, and then uh, the environment, right? So do you want a phantom server? If the answer is yes, you type one. Do you want a domain controller? If the answer is yes, you type one. And this means the script is gonna turn your Windows server into a domain controller. Which is, it's a big difference. It's not just a server. It will actually do all the steps required to turn it into a domain controller. Then you can have another server and you can select if you want it to join the actual domain controller. And then of course, if you wanna have a Kali machine, uh, you can select it as well. Then we have the private IP addresses of your environment. So everything is here. Everything is here. You can change it. You can uh, modify it as you want. Uh, notice that we even give you the, uh, the name of the operating system that we're using. Uh, do you want the client to join the domain? Yes. Um, so I wanted to go and basically show you because this is usually where things can get complicated if you're using AWS and you're confused. Um, so you can take a look at the things that you may have to input. Remember, it's not that in the, in the cloud one, it's not that easy. To, to, you basically have to clone it. You have to, to, to install an environment for it. Uh, install the dependencies, it's in Python 3, and then you gotta go into conf, configure it, uh, and then build it. And it takes around 15 to 20 minutes if we're doing the endpoint one in the cloud. That's what it's gonna take. If you're doing the local one, which I already built, and I have it here to show you today because it takes quite a bit, depending on your broadband, if you're downloading all these ISOs and they are being set up by VirtualBox, uh, and of course, there's a bunch of scripts that require the machines to uh, reboot and then be reconfigured. Um, it's going to take time. I would say that to have like a full um, local uh, environment, it's going to take you plus an hour. I would say it's plus, more than an hour. It's going to take you more than an hour. So um, I believe this covers the configuration. And then I can go back to show you, uh, and we can move on. Uh, on uh, let's talk about adversarial simulation for a second. Now that I have shown you the infrastructure that you can do, you can do it either locally, you can do it either uh, in the cloud for uh, you can do it in the cloud for. Uh, endpoint and you're going to cloud for cloud-based only attacks, which is the latest thing that we're doing. And uh, I will show you that. Hopefully, I, I will be able to show it. Um, let's talk about what is it behind all this. this is, it, it goes just beyond the simply just setting a bunch of machines, connecting together, and replaying some code. So, so what we want to do in, in, in adversarial simulation is we want to test um, applications, uh, network applications, or specifically host defense architecture resilience against an attacker. So there are many frameworks that do this, and I already touched in one that have a number uh, of attack actions, items that are taken from known exploitation and post exploitation actions. And these are usually called TTPs. Now the TTPs have been defined. Who has defined the TTPs? I would say that before we had a tag, we had the private industry coming up with fancy names, you know, APT1, APTX, uh, fancy there, whatever you want to call it. And then eventually all this has been sort of moving into a nomenclature. And this nomenclature, which is currently the one that is um, widely accepted, uh, at least in the United States, um, uh, by uh, government and private sector, is MITRE, right? So we talk about MITRE. You, you must know MITRE. <laughs> MITRE is, is basically the language that we all talk, like right? starting from this. Uh, so you, you, if you do reports, if you do uh, uh, forensics, if you do pen tests, if you do vulnerability assessments, 
I mean, you had to know CV, what CVEs are. So CVEs, all this database and nomenclature uh, comes basically from MITRE. And now MITRE uh, continues uh, coming up with this type of systems of nomenclatures and one of them, which is the one that we are referring specifically because of adversarial simulation is a uh, MITRE attack. Uh, and within that MITRE attack, there are what we call the TTPs, which is uh, uh, the NICS uh, tools and procedures. Now, this is something that I want you to remember as we move on. And uh, I will talk about, uh, um, I will talk a little bit about some of my experience uh, with enterprise companies using this tool. Um, and, and one of the main things that I usually tell these companies before they deploy this, uh, which is by the way, something that we never expected. Uh, we, it's, it's, it's kind of uh, interesting that I brought you from the basics, from the mindset of a single researcher, defender, uh, or a security engineer, because sometimes I know we, we wear many hats and there are many companies that don't want to hide anybody else. You happen to be the, the one single person that does everything. This, this is wonderful for you. You're going to learn a lot. But there are other companies that have very large um, uh, departments. Uh, I remember I was at one point, I was an engineer, um, I was a systems engineer, and I was a, working for a company uh, in Philadelphia who had 30 people just for McAfee antivirus. So that's, it was around 3,000 people, uh, IT department, and just for the antivirus, there were 30 people. So, so, so we go from the streams of, uh, you are the, the, the one and single only security engineer to very widespread and super large. Uh, with uh, several locations and all kinds of infrastructure. But the, 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 the main thing in all this is the golden image. So what is a golden image? A golden image is a, um, uh, let me put it this way, is the representation of your company's um, device uh, that comes with a specific software and that comes with a specific uh, configuration. So if you work for, for, for any company, usually uh, depending on the level of maturity, eventually every time somebody joins in, uh, they are assigned a laptop, uh, you get a ThinkPad or you get a, a MacBook or whatever it is in your area, Dell, and then you have to have Word, Excel, or whatever is it that is applicable to what you're going to do. And of course, there is an inventory <coughs> of versions of this software, of licenses, of course, um, and the hardware that you're using, right? So a golden image is basically we make either an ISO or in some cases, which is crazy, uh, I never thought I was, I was gonna see that. Basically a actual replication of a physical machine that represents uh, what is um, given or what is provided uh, to the employees or what is deployed on the network. So that is the golden image. Golden image is the representation of your company. Uh, software and application posture. So for you to have a, a actual valuable result from these tools, you can use these tools. There are many other tools. There's a market around this, right? Uh, for you to have a, a consistent um, uh, and something valuable, you need to test this against your golden image. If you do not do that, that basically what you're doing is an exercise in curiosity because you don't know, right? Remember, we're talking about this uh, TTPs, right? Tool techniques and procedures. Uh, this tools, techniques and procedures are attributed to a specific groups of uh, adversaries Right, there are groups. Actually, let's let's uh, let's actually select one here so you can see it. Um, we can 
select the one random, right? So this is exploitation for credential access. Uh, usually you have in the reference, of course I selected the one that didn't have it, but um, if we actually go into some of these things, uh, usually in the references, you would actually see what groups are associated with it. See this? So in this case, this is create account, local account. So if, if we looked at um, the, the, basically the technique is creating a local account, it affects these platforms, it is related to a tactic uh, uh, stage uh, associated with persistence. Persistence is the ability to stay at targeted as a targeted uh, organization uh, after I exploit, I right? says post exploitation. So this technique uh, uh, is associated with these groups. And these groups, like I told you before, um, some of this come from the uh, industry, private industry, uh, from the crowd strikes, the silences, the fire eyes of the world. But it's important to understand, right, that the reason why you want to do um, adversarial uh, simulation is because technically you want to do an exercise to see how your organization will do if you were attacked by specific adversary or more specifically, if the techniques known to an, a specific uh, main group or adversary were performed on your network. In order to determine that, you must use a golden image. And the golden image can be created locally or the golden image can be created, you can, you can have a golden AMI. There is actually an entire procedure how to create a golden AMI if, if you are a person that has an infrastructure that is based on the cloud. Uh, so uh, if you're gonna run these tools, and remember we went from use it as a researcher, use it as a defender for detection, or use it as adversarial simulation. So if we're gonna use it as adversarial simulation, um, what we're providing you will give you guidance of how to set it up. However, um, I would say that you're gonna have to do some work to um, likely uh, customize, like for example, let's say we build a Windows machine. You may have to use the ISOs that you use at your company. You may have to uh, modify the scripts, the building scripts, the Ansible scripts, uh, or, or the vagrant barrels in order to bring in stuff that is in your network, in your company, and then perform the simulations. And then obviously you want to see, okay, what happened? So if we use technique X against my desktop golden image, how will we do? So here's one of the things that um, I've been seeing lately, which is enterprise, very large companies, that are using this uh, framework and they're applying it inside the perimeter and they are modifying the, uh, the instances. In some cases, they're just deploying the, 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 the agents of the framework. Remember, uh, Caldera has an agent um, and so does uh, Atomic Rec Team. And they are replicating these attacks and then doing Purple, sort of a purple team exercises where they're able to execute or replicate these attacks. Remember, I just show you, uh, give you an idea, and then, oh, let's see what happens. The, was this technique executed um, successfully? Why we didn't catch it, for example? Or uh, I saw a, um, I had a session with a uh, customer that basically they wanted to see if their SOC will catch. Like if, if, if let's say we, hypothetically, we, you work in a specific industry and you're concerned about a specific adversary, let's say FinCEN, for example, or, or fin Seven or whatever name we can come up with that is related to your industry and we're able to replicate most of the techniques that they do, uh, how will we do? And that right there is a, a, a very practical 
uh, application of the Sarah simulation. So, so um, I, I would like to caution about uh, if you're watching this and, and you're thinking about it, um, you can reach out to us and, and we, can, we can give you some guidance. But remember, I particularly, as a, as a pet tester and still are, uh, I love to see things that run a system and they're running on computers that probably are gonna go uh, and attack them. So these are frameworks that I'm not sure if the, this, the, the, the purpose of this when, this, when they were uh, developed uh, was for you to leave them there all the time. Right? So, so this, this is something that if it's going to occur, it's almost like a fire drill where you do it, you, you measure what happened uh, you raise the alert, you see how your teams respond. We do a uh, uh, lessons learned and what, what are the results of this? And then this is dismantled and uh, you go back to your benchmarks and then the benchmarks are adjusted depending on the results. But leaving this live on, 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 on uh, inside the perimeter, I particularly would not suggest you to do that. And I would not suggest you to even leave if you have a local attack framework that has not been configured or hardened according to your infosec policy, we'll go back to the golden image uh, to leave it on. Uh, you never know what can happen and, and you don't want to provide extra doors to, to will be attackers. Um, so the benefits of this obviously is like I was saying, you will measure response capacity you will measure risk level. You will basically um, measure very specifically your attack surface. Not all of it is, is, is too ambitious to say you will, but, but at least we'll go from, okay, we can do a tabletop exercise and talk how cool it will be if we've responded, or we can have a pen testing team, team come, which is, you know, that's, that's also valuable, or we can replicate the exact techniques um, that a, a number of adversaries will use against us and see how we do. Uh, and like I was saying, uh, things like detection telemetry, are we getting this? It, like a local account was created, did we detect it? Uh, did our IR team was uh, get alerts? Did our stock pick it up? Uh, were we able to isolate, for example, there are, um, I, I'm not sure of how many of you are probably familiar, but if you're using Zor, uh, or like Phantom, for example, Phantom has uh, playbooks that if uh, a specific type of, of command is detected or a specific type of uh, um, uh, malicious code uh, could be detected, uh, the machine is immediately isolated from the network. It runs a, a, uh, a playbook that basically is a bunch of commands. Imagine that you are the machine and you're basically disabling it, taking it away, sends a message and said, this machine has been disabled, you gotta go and take care of it. Um, these are things that can be tested with this. Uh, and, and that's definitely a very high uh, value uh, from the sense of a blue team from the defense per perspective. Um, and since we were talking, um, adversary uh, simulation can provide a, a view beyond unsuccessful pen tests or red team exercises. Uh, adversary simulation is not, it's not, it's, it's, it does not replace uh, pen testers or there are great pen testing uh, teams out there, uh, internal and commercial. Uh, and there are uh, um, good vendors and, and, and procedures for red teaming, uh, but adversarial simulation does not replace that. It's, it's also a part of the, of, of the tool set that you can use. Uh, and of course, uh, this is um, another advantage. Uh, there are certain scenarios, uh, there are certain adversarial simulation scenarios there, there might be safer to run the pen testing or testing techniques that potentially that are potentially disrupted or destructive. Um, and I seen that myself, uh, where I as a pen tester, usually I, I want to make sure that if I'm going to be 
you know, scanning, for example, or there are like legacy devices, uh, fragile printers, mainframes, things that have TCP IP uh, stacks that are very old and that if you send in an MF scan, this thing is gonna crash. Uh, and, and, and I'm sure some of you are listening saying this happened to me once, uh, you can get in trouble. Uh, and there are places where this may not be safe, uh, especially in many financial institutions that have lots of frame, uh, mainframes. So uh, running this type of uh, uh, um, scenarios might be safer uh, from from certain uh, from the perspective of uh, what is control and what is that we can measure, and of course it, this is wonderful for blue teamers. And finally, um, uh, on the advantages and disadvantages, um, some caveats about of a zero simulation. Uh, it does not prevent zero days, obviously, and only reflects an ability to react. And the ability to react, it will be <clears throat> based on a lot of the factors that we just talked about. This does not replace pen testing or bug bounty or red team. Uh, as you can see, a lot of these actions are uh, post exploitation. Um, and you may have specific apps and specific scenarios that are not covered within these frameworks. Nor all the frameworks, by the way, are able to replicate all the atomics or all the, uh, there are atomics that you can't replicate. There are TDPs that are, because of data, or because of code, you're just simply not able to replicate it. So there is, there's even, there's a, there's, there's a universe, uh, there's a sample universe of, of all these TDPs that we can test. Uh, but regardless, this helps. Uh, and of course, like I said before, and I wanna re-emphasize, uh, there's not much of a value if you know, if if you do not test against a uh, golden image, there's not much of a value. What you're doing here is basically an exercise in curiosity. You're not you're not you're not really gonna get valuable information to act. You're not gonna get information that is just oh wow, look we run uh, uh, APTX techniques and they all went through. So if somebody uses techniques against us, will be it will be a bad day. Right, so these are things that um, the, the only way to, to, to measure them is by testing these frameworks against the most accurate uh, representation of what your infosec policy is, of your uh, applications, your whitelisting, et cetera, et cetera. Now, there is, right, uh, certain people that says that there's a questionable accuracy because a lot of times, um, uh, you had to disable EDR and the active virus. So many people say, okay, well, yeah, we had to disable this in order to run it. So how accurate this is in reality? I still think that this provides a value. I still think that there, there is definitely a, 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 um, a, a uh, something to get from uh, uh, the Sarah simulation. But obviously, you have to have all these caveats. Um, the, the the hype in the infosec industry always promises you to you get one product and you get it all, uh, and and that's not true. Uh, and like I said before, actually, I I, I just said this. Uh, these tools. Uh, this should be fixed here. These tools uh, partially depict sophisticated adversary actions. You can't possibly think that because you replicated a number of uh, TTPs for a specific um, adversary that is related to your industry that you're protected. I mean, that's it's foolish to believe that. You have a sample of it. You have maybe a, a good measure of what may happen, but you can't say, oh, where if APTX comes here, it, it can't do anything because we already tested this and we already covered it. Don't don't fall for that. Obviously, I'm sure you you guys know better. Uh, um, once a tool or a technique has been published, and this I know this firsthand because I did this for years in my years of BLX, where we will literally get um, attacks 
in DDoS code that nobody else had, but we had it because we had our own ASN. Uh, once you publish the signatures, and there's a community of signatures for Sonord, for uh, now that there's there's a, there's a good drive for uh, for playbooks, for Jupyter playbooks, for uh, thread hunting, for uh, uh, packet catcher. Most of this stuff is boring. So the 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 adversary is likely not to repeat or improve their techniques based on what they know is out there. So once that stuff is out, it's usually burn. So let's get on to now, what is it that we are including in the engines before we start running uh, uh, simulations here? And uh, hopefully you're still with me. Uh, hopefully you, you had had time to download this. So by the time I get to the actual demo, maybe you can do it with me. So we decided to include MITRE Caldera because it's developed by MITRE. So Caldera is a, a cybersecurity framework uh, to, to run what they call autonomous breach and simulation exercises. And it can be used as a manual red team engagements or automated incident response. Caldera is way more than just simply uh, replicating TTPs. Uh, we put it there. Um, my experience with Caldera is that you have to get acquainted to it, like any tool. Some tools are easier to to, to get a hold on and, and, and execute them. Some others take a little time. Uh, you will see, I'll show you a little bit today. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely suggest you, you have nothing to lose. Basically, all you have to do is clone it and download and practice about it because you might actually get into it. You might uh, have uh, or find a, um, a a very good use for it in your organization. And of course, we have um, ART, Atomic Red Team. And Atomic Red Team has been a pioneer, basically on the replication of this TTPs. And uh, uh, we uh, we definitely um, uh, continue to support it. We we're happy. We chose to use it. It's a great company. Um, and they do great things, um, but specifically the fact that they were able to create this repository uh, and give it away to the community is, is pretty awesome. Um, again, this is something uh, that I need to reemphasize. Most of this comes from the MITRE attack framework. So we come from the net theory. What is it that, how are we gonna understand these actions? These actions are not just code that runs. These actions come because they have been selected after either vendors or government or researchers themselves had categorized them, had agreed upon in a single shareable and accepted language. And that is the language of the technique numbers or uh, the common uh, vulnerabilities and exposures to CVEs. Uh, or um, there is also a uh, web techniques here as well uh, that, uh, that are included. So when, let's get to uh, see if we can run an attack here. So um, right now, here the, the supported um, actions for the attack range. Obviously we gotta build it, we gotta perform an attack simulation, uh, we can search with the, obviously Splunk. Uh, we can uh, destroy it, stop it and resume. So let's see if I can see what's next. Here are some of the commands. Uh, I'm gonna leave that there and then I'm gonna go, hopefully it won't kick me out. It did. So let me look at the local one that I have here. So let's go into that. So here I, I had to obviously be an environment so I can execute my commands. Um, you will see this and just in case, why do you do that, Rod? Okay, when, when, uh, when you actually, before you install it, um, you had to install the, obviously the, the dependencies. So my suggestion for you is to create a uh, Python 3 environment 
uh, do a PIB3. There's odd requirements, and this e that's the easiest way to do it. So let's see if I were to do Python attach range underscore local. And let's type help. So those are the commands that I can do. Uh, I had stopped the local. So let me actually do A as an action and then type resume. See what happens. Hopefully the, the demo gods are with me. And if the demo gods are with me, you start seeing pop in the uh, virtual box. See that? The, the, the command prints out. And yeah, I see some blinking virtual box. So here's my attack range Splunk server. Uh, I'm sure soon I will get the Windows one and the Kali. So I have a MacBook with uh, 16 gigs of RAM and an SSD. And you know, uh, this is also to give you a, an idea of, of uh, how long it would take if you decide to do it. You, you gotta make a decision. Um, if you wanna do it locally or if you wanna do it in the cloud. So as you can see, we have my domain controller there. Here's the Ubuntu with the Splunk and um, Caldera running. Uh, and I sh we should be able to see the Kali server. Let's see if it pops up. So as you can see, it takes some time. You can actually see everything that's going on in the background. And uh, in just a few seconds, I would do a command that you uh, need to know in order to, in case you forgot, right? If you forgot, for example, whether your IP address were, or like me, you forgot what the passwords are. So, um, We should be able to see the actual uh, the main controller in just a second. And um, okay, there's my Windows machine. And looks like I had an issue, but if I do this, for example, I should be able to see my IP addresses. All right, please tell me you have them. So I should be able to see, uh, there is. So as you can see, we had an issue with the Kali machine, I believe, um, but we uh, now know where my IP addresses are. As you can see, you couldn't bring it on. Now I could probably cheat here and go into, uh, Virtual box and probably bring it up, but we're not gonna use it for now. So let's uh, actually let's try to replicate an attack. So now that I have my machines on, actually let's go ahead. So you see that I, I that this actually works, and as you can see, this is my local IP address. I'm gonna put it right there, and there is my block. So here, I believe. case this happens this happens to me all the time i just gotta go back here then i go no no uh, range and then i'll go here and it's oh look this is my password it wasn't that was <laughs> so i copy it i this happens to me all the time by the way so i just go here and here with my password and there I am. So if I go into search, remember I told you there's an index equal main, correct? Right? There's some events there, right? And you can see, uh, let's see, let's take a look at, I don't like to do this all the time. Is this too big for you guys or is this looking good? Yeah, the size it seems good from my end. Excellent. All uh, right, so, so here's the main, and now let's go to the win. And then we're going to win. We got, as you can see, the XML. 
And then here, we have the processes. This is obviously coming from Sysmon. We have destination IP addresses. We have hosts, <clears throat> actions. Let's see if we can get uh, event code. Very important when you are uh, looking for things to happen after you execute certain codes. Um, let's see what else, process ID, process to execution, protocols, source addresses. So there's plenty of stuff here and there's 229 more fields, right? Okay, it gets even better. Check me out. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go to the attack range reporting. Look what happened. I had executed some techniques here before. And oh, it looks like I have an issue here, but I wonder what happened because I tested this. Uh, but um, here, uh, when this works, <laughs> Uh, you will see the, the amount of techniques that you executed. Actually, we did today. So let's try. Let's try actually to execute. Ex execute. So let's go back and do help. Okay. So I'm going to do. I want a, a uh, action simulate, and then I want a simulation technique. I want to do the ten. The zero, the zero three, I believe I can do zero one. And the target is going to be uh, the domain controller, obviously, because that's the, machine, that's the only machine we have right now. So if I go here, I go execute. And then now we're calling Atomic Rec Team. And Atomic Rec Team is going to try to replicate the atomic, which you see a cap, right? So uh, it looks like we had an issue there. Uh, so let me try another type of technique. Of course, this happened today. Uh, let's see if uh, I'm able to get away with it. I can also rebuild it, but it will take some time to rebuild. Uh, and this is also, by the way, it is a, uh, it looks like it's, it, it's, it's having issues. Um, so uh, this may happen. Uh, when this happens, what I will suggest you to do is to rebuild it. Um, I probably don't want to do that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to, I'm going to show you the, let's see if I can show you the cloud one. Um, and then we can take a look at, see if, if it will show me uh, what happened uh, yesterday when I was testing it before today. But um, going back to this, if we go into search and reporting, and we go into index equals, should be data here, attack. See, these are the attacks that I actually executed before. And these are the attacks. This, this tells you what was executed, right? And against what? So here, the interesting thing is I was trying to re-execute this technique, which is T one zero zero three two. So let's see, what is this? So we we'll go miter attack. We should be able to find that this technique is OS credential dumping. Security account manager, right? So this is basically what Caldera is. So going back, it is registered as it occurred in the actual um, uh, host. So um, I apologize, this, this always happens. 
where things I prepare them and then they break. Um, but uh, let's see, uh, this is another of the things that, that you can use. Um, and again, uh, you can uh, use, for example, uh, ESCU, which is part of the content updates that we do. Uh, see if we can do credential dumping. Or we can do key. Uh, this thing is playing games for me today. I apologize. Um, but if this was working as it should, um, we should be able to find, right, the accounts that correspond to the techniques that we're trying to detect. Now, if this was me on my day, uh, my day work, I would destroy this. But I don't want to destroy it and rebuild it because we will go through the time and we're ready at, we, we have, I believe, um, half an hour left. So I wanna try to show you as much as I can. Um, and uh, in this section, you can actually see the, the actual searches that may apply to what we're looking for, right? So um, going back, we were able to uh, find the, sorry. In theory, this should have shown me, for example, today one attack, but it's giving me an issue. Uh, and you can go into the ES uh, content updates. And basically uh, what I wanted to show you, which uh, um, I'm not able to show you at this point, is um, search for the actual technique. Okay, let's see if we can use this. Uh, search for the actual technique, execute the search, and you actually can see um, that it's uh, basically detected. So let's see, key 013. Let's see, we can run it and see if it works. It looks like this might be a broken at this point. It needs to be rebuilt, but um, you can see here that you can basically run. Uh, we actually, when we uh, were testing zero logon, we discovered that the Mimi cats, because uh, one of the things that happened with zero logon is the first there was a disclosure, and then, like always, the community starts grabbing onto whatever an exploit was, and then they started acting, which is something fascinating. And uh, we were able to. Uh, it was adapted to Mimikatz pretty quick. Uh, and uh, we were able to detect the Mimikatz one with this. Uh, and again, I apologize again, because this of course should have worked, um, but uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, I wonder if I stop it and restart it again. Let me try that action, stop, and maybe we'll bring it back. If I can do destroy for some point rebuild, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to do stop. <clears throat> and if I do that, you will see how the machines basically they go. Uh, they they're basically stopped. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to resume it back, try to execute again. Again, if this is just what will be happening to you uh, or to me, uh, and I had obviously time, I will simply destroy it and rebuild it. And if this happens, for example, so one of the things that may happen to you, and this is good that, I guess it's a server line and this is happening, is that um, if this happens to you, for example, with a cloud version, you can always destroy it and redo it. So what happens sometimes is there are either hiccups with DNS or there are hiccups with downloads. And then, for example, uh, Sysmon would not be installed or um, uh, the universal forwarder would not be installed because there was a there was a hiccup and a timeout during the uh, the, the, the Terraform execution, and uh, um, I suspect that it has to do with this, and uh, um, and basically that uh, costs 
the the uh, the fact that um, your your uh, universal order is not working, for example. So it looks like it's bringing back the Kali machine. Here's my Kali machine. And again, most of you know um, the Kali is, uh, but now we can use it. Um, and then uh, this is usually what happens when you hit stop and then you try to bring it back. Uh, and if this gets me an error, I'm just gonna go into the cloud one. Uh, let's see where we are. There's my Kali. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, you see my IP address. We can use this command to find out if they're on or not. So they should respond quick. And there it is. It looks like they're all on. Uh, we'll see about that. So if I ping uh, my, let's ping the uh, server and let's see where they Yeah, yeah, communication. So uh, we have now all our machines. Um, let's actually look at this. Oh, wait, found it. See that? This is the uh, um, access LSAS memory uh, dump for creation rule, AKA technique T1003.001. Uh, Here it is, found it. And at least this went well. <laughs> it took some time. Uh, maybe I just needed to restart it, uh, but um, I did execute that, that technique. I did not execute this one. Uh, let's see if we can try another one. Let's try this one. Yeah. Let's see if we can get some here. Um, and then, of course, ESEU is bang. There we go. So, so now, guys, we have gone full circle. We have set up the infrastructure, replicated the attack, done the detection. Detection right here. Where is this coming from? If I click it here, it will open and it will find it in Splunk. That's basically what it will do. But here's the, uh, the detection. And the detection uh, is part of our content. This is, this is remember when I, when I told you about how we produce um, detections and then we push it into content? What you see right now, this is the end result of what we do. Like we start with SPL, which is, you can see this SPL code, that SPL code goes into, uh, it's a YAML file and this YAML has a, a structure. Um, this runs through the attack range, detected, detected, then it goes checked into the parameters, the, the parameters checked, then eventually this is uh, compacted, packed and published as an app which is called the ESE. So I'm glad at least this work. Um, this was, it was a good idea to do what I did. Um, so now I know that I may try to do that. Uh, let's see if this one is working. Yeah, it's giving me an error. I was told this was fixed, but it looks like it's not. Let's see. But uh, when everything is uh, working fine, uh, you should see there will be like a nice uh, um, analytics here of all the tactics you have executed and uh, everything that happened, right? So uh, I apologize for having issues with this, um, but let's move on to Caldera. Now uh, you can see, again, I'm gonna repeat it for, for clarity. We start here, and I know I was having issues here, but again, we'll go here, help. And then, so you can see what the uh, the command is. And then we do dash A for action. So we want to simulate a technique. We want to uh, um, use a simulation technique. We were using 10, 10, oh, 3, 0, 0, 1. 
and then uh, we need a um, target. And the target is the machine that we're doing this against. So we'll go here and see if this will, this time will be reachable and it will go through, we'll see. Uh, so again, this is calling um, uh, Atomic Rec Team, executing the technique. And if we're lucky uh, and, and the stop, no, we're, we're not. So if this was working fine, you will see this is successful uh, execution. Um, I'm glad I was able to show you how the detection uh, occur, and I'm glad uh, I'm glad I did this yesterday uh, to have some data here in case this happened. So if we go here, what you see here is Caldera. So Caldera is a um, looks like I'm gonna have to let's see. I got my Caldera password. Got range. Uh -huh. Let's see what's left. Let's see if we can find that Splunk plus this. Let's see what Caldera is. Um, there, uh, yeah, this should be the password. Let's plug in. So Caldera runs on the same server that Splunk runs uh, on board 8888. So let's go here. Admin, Wonder what's going on. I wonder if this let's type it like this then. It's work. Okay, here we go. We're in. <clears throat> so now what you see here is the is basically the interface of Calera, uh, which is a we did at the, um, we did AT, uh, atomic red team. Uh, we executed attacks via atomic red team. And now we're looking at the Caldera interface, which is our second uh, attack simulation framework. Uh, so here we have the first thing we can check is agents. As you can see, there's an agent running our Windows host right here, so TCP. Right? And it tells us that the privilege uh, of what is running, it's user, and the PID is uh, 2088. We can go back to campaigns and we can take a look at adversaries. And adversaries, are, um, usually there are existing profiles that we can take advantage from. So for example, if we select a collection, right? And you look at um, the uh, icons, uh, I hope you guys are, can see this well. Uh, the icons refer to the operating systems that this uh, abilities, that's how they call it, uh, this abilities. See here, at ability, they call it ability, uh, are applicable to. So in this case, uh, for example, creating a staging directory uh, applies to Windows, uh, Ubuntu, and um, Mac. So let's see if we can do, for example, discovery. We, we were looking at collection, it's good, uh, discovery. And then discovery, we can do things to, such as identify active user, find local user, uh, um, find user processes, view admin shares. So let's see if we can apply this, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and save this discovery. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to campaign and I go to operations. It is important before I go through this, since this, this is usually when the, the, the demo gods play with you. Um, if you don't have agents on, and agents should be on and created as we install this, you shouldn't have to, you can if you want, you can, there is extra way to deploy an agent. There are several agents. Uh, usually man X is, is the, the 
the TCP one that we decided to use, or you can use Ragdoll. But uh, what, if you do this, for example, you'll see the code. So basically, I will have to go on my Windows machine and most likely open a um, uh, PowerShell terminal and run this, and most likely you will get a, a, a new agent. Uh, we decided to change to Manx because we were having issues with the agents in um, AWS. I suspected that AWS was had some sort of a DPI technology that was killing some of the uh, uh, agents. So our agent is running. We have saved a profile. So now let's go into operations. So in operations, uh, I'm going to name it test. And then here, I'm going to select we can use all groups. I'm going to select discovery. Uh, I'm going to keep open forever, run immediately. Uh, let's see what, what else we got. Force atomic ordering. And then the start. Let's see what happens. So remember that I showed you the profile discovery. Remember that I show you what items of the profile, the discovery profile apply to the Windows operating system. Because at the end of the day, guys, we're running all this against my Windows machine, which is the, the Windows uh, server. So once we're applying this, watch, there is a percentage of the operation that's occurring. There is obviously they use colors to show you the status of what's happening. And you can see, for example, that identified active user was successful. And then as the operations continue, um, you will see the actual, um, the actual progress of this. See, now we have identified local users, active users. It looks like it wasn't able to find user processes Remember what I told you, they go by techniques and they want to see what techniques are successful or not. If we were trying to gauge what your organization uh, would be like if these attacks are performed, the best way to be uh, more accurate about this will be doing this against a golden image. So remember that. Remember, remember that because here's where we score. Here is where we execute and we'll see, okay, how will we do? So uh, how, were we expecting this agent to identify active users? Uh, were we expecting this agent to fail to view admin shares? Now you know that without, with a user privilege, most likely you won't be able to do it. Um, or even uh, is testing for some compliant domain controller. Um, and I'll show you uh, in just a minute, let's see where we are. This is only 20%. This is gonna take some time uh, and it takes some time to run, right? So um, remember, you can always expand this. You can deploy more machines and you can deploy more agents. And uh, uh, there are other uh, uh, good things that, are, that I may show you in just a second. Because uh, I, I want before we go, I want to show you uh, the what we're doing with the cloud, the cloud only one. Uh, if you were to do the standard one, like if you went right now and, and clone the one that is in AWS, um, it would be exactly what you're seeing here, but in AWS. So um, it, it won't be virtual box, but you will have to either SSH or RDP in your uh, and your actual uh, host. So as you can see, I think, did we finish? No, we're still at 28. Uh, so it was able to discover, for example, permission groups were able to be discovered. Uh, we're not able to discover antiviruses, uh, antivirus programs. So I think you get the idea at this point. Uh, this is actually a very nice, uh, very nice way to visually see what the process of testing all all these adversarial techniques against a host and hopefully if you do this 
from the perspective of doing a, uh, a purple team exercise, for example, or a blue team exercise. So you can see clearly what's going on. So that's the, the, the nice thing about Caldera. And Caldera, of course, is, uh, uh, is open source and it's free. So uh, you, you don't lose anything trying it. So uh, we give you the entire package here. The only thing you're gonna have to do is obviously, if you wanna test it, against some of your stuff, then you know, you're gonna have to deploy. Uh, you're gonna have to fix the configuration, obviously, so the, inter so the network of the range matches your network and you're gonna be, you're gonna have to deploy these agents in, in uh, host or, or even uh, bare metal uh, devices that uh, represent your organization. So, um, I think at this point we're at 32%. Um, so I think you got a good, good grasp of, of what this does. Uh, there are other stuff that we can look at here. Uh, uh, there are plugins, there are things that they call uh, game board, or like if we go to Manax, for example, uh, it's a coordinated access Trojan. Um, and there are other things that you can basically play with, select the specific techniques or procedures. Um, so I um, wanted to show you this. So um, now you have an idea what to do. And uh, we have successfully, at least that we were able, at least in this case, we were able, it looks like the, the, the Caldera agent is definitely running because obviously we wouldn't be seeing this. Uh, we have some hiccups with the ATR with the atomic red team in uh but but thankfully i was able to run those simulations yesterday and we were able to find the detections and we were able to find the uh, uh the data at the splunk so as you can see um i hope i'm not overwhelming you with information but this thing is fascinating you can do uh, everything you want with this it's, it's it's you can download it install it right now um and then uh let's uh, what we got this is let's see if I can show you the uh, no we're not there this is attack range cloud so action resume let's see if we hopefully this uh, this is my third demo this will go better um, so right now what I'm doing guys is uh, <coughs> basically restarting the cloud only attack range this is like in beta 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 um uh, this is not yet production quality ready but i would like to show you what we are trying to do so um if i do that which is the command you can see that there is a cloud attack range right here let's check it out uh there we go uh, why? It took a little bit the last time it restarted. There we go. Uh, and I think I changed the password here. And there's my Splunk. This is my Splunk instance that was created during the creation of the uh, attack range cloud only in the cloud. So in here, we should be able to see see my search history uh aws let's do this so if i add aws check that out those are logs for cloud trails right there is cloud trails um and let's see if the demo logs will help me on this and we can execute an attack uh, uh, using Leonidas. So Leonidas, uh, which is something like kind of brand new, Leonidas is a, uh, a attack simulation framework uh, created by F5, uh, F-Secure, sorry, F-Secure Labs. 
Uh, and uh, we looked at it and we thought, hey, this is a great idea. Maybe we can adapt it to ours. So we were taking a look at it. I, what I did here, just so you know, is I cloned Leonidas inside my uh, environment. And uh, as you can see, if you, if you look at in, uh, in my environment, I also have a Kubernetes cluster. And this Kubernetes cluster, if I am not mistaken, uh, is a WordPress. Let's see. Let's see what we got. If I'm not mistaken, is a WordPress. I'm not sure how long it would take. Oh, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. This, this is not the right. No, it's not that. Sorry. I don't think this has. Oh, yeah. I was wondering. Like that looked like a like a, a pip hop address. Let's try this better. Same here. Hmm. There might be some issue with the external IP address here, but this, in theory, should be the um, the IP address of my uh, attack range WordPress cluster. Like I said, guys, this is uh, this is in beta. This is not really in production yet. Let's see if we can execute an attack. So basically. Uh, let me show you a little bit. Um, the what we're trying to do here, basically, is um, you, we create a Splunk instance, like I just show you. We get CloudTrail, uh, CloudTrail's uh, uh, logs, and then we replicate attacks, and then we grab the data. Right. So uh, if we go into Leonid Leonidas, right and we go into definitions, you can see that this is also following the migrant attack, which I, I, I find this very useful and, I, and uh, we hope to collaborate. This is, this is a great project, I like this. Uh, so you can see all the faces, right? And this, this is basically matches uh, um, migrant attack. But remember the cloud uh, for many, for, for a lot of times, um, people thought that the cloud was just an extension of the perimeter. That's not true. Every time you deal with either GCP, Azure, or AWS, it's a completely different deal. So uh, I'm running out of time. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's see if we can replicate an attack in the cloud. Uh, so here's one. So in this case, I'm going to uh, simulate a file right, that is inside Leonidas, um, and it's, uh, it, it's going to try to enumerate uh, AIM users. So let's, let's see if it works. So that did not work. Let's see if we can uh, try another attack. Let's see if we can add a user. So it asks you, do you want to execute this attack, yes or no? We already executed uh, this attack yesterday, so not sure if it's going to tell me no because the example user exists already. But you say yes, and then it gets me an error. So that's something that we got to fix uh, if we want to re-execute. So the answer is the entity exists already, and actually I'll show you. Look for it. We're going to find it either for, by listing keys or by creation of the user, right? Notice that it, it locks my, it locks the uh, Voto user agent, which is usually corresponds to uh, the use of uh, AWS uh, CLI. So, um, and with that, I pretty much show you the entire picture. Uh, I kind of skip a lot of, uh, uh, of the uh, slides and just went into hands-on. Uh, let's see if 
this is this is how it should have looked like when we were looking at the at the at the dashboard and again i'm positive if i rebuild it it will work but this is this is how it would look like and this is uh basically what you would look at the bottom uh what were the simulations that you executed uh the atomic test the host name that you executed against um and then we already saw caldera uh and of course the kali uh you can always use kali and uh in this case it just you say uh multi-handler interpreter and then found it it's just an example that you can actually exploit your machines they're only in the cloud but locally as well and hopefully we will have this for as we advance and we uh, develop more in the cloud we'll have endpoint cloud endpoint local cloud only and that's what we're looking at right now uh, we will e we're even getting more ambitious. We want to create a complete data repository of all these attacks and help you replicate the attack with the data so you can create the detection as well. So there's there's a lot that we 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 want to cover and it's gonna take some time, but again, I invite you to uh, to use this project. I invite you to test it. I invite you to uh, suggest fixes and do a PR uh, and uh, with that uh, I think this is it for me all right thanks Rod thank you very much all right so we'll jump on to the question and answer portion let me just check on the question and answer uh, back I don't see any questions here. I'll you can always reach me out via Twitter. But I'm highly encouraging our attendees to take on it. Sorry, uh, I think uh, Sir Jamie is having um, <laughs> yes, he has a technical issue. Yeah, it, it, it kind of sucks here. No, I'm right here. I, I thought Rod was going to say something. Okay. Oh. That's perfectly all right. Though, yeah, there, there are no questions. Jay, could you see if there are any questions on your end? Because on my end, I couldn't find any questions on the Q&A box. Uh, I can only see uh, a chat. Uh, can we have the copy of the slide for our reference? Uh, we will be actually uh, giving up the slides soon. Uh, we'll be posting it on the website. So no need to worry about it. Okay, cool. I hope you have a lot of fun and uh, I, I, listen, you can reach out to me via Twitter. Uh, uh, you can, uh, the, there is a contact for the, the Splunk security research team. Uh, Patrick or Jose will be glad to help you or I will be glad to help you as well. We will definitely follow you on Twitter and you know, um, this is really a good topic because um, a lot of people have uh, don't have don't know what red teaming and how to you know automate uh their exercise with adversarial simulations cool i hope i was able to provide a little bit of a light on this yeah because here in the philippines there, there there's a mixture of you know uh comparing vapt to red teaming so there's been uh misconceptions that they are the same and you know uh thank you for giving um some good good points that they are they are really different oh, i'm glad uh, thank you for having me guys uh, good luck and uh, we'll be in touch yeah yeah but, thank you Th oh, wait, thank uh, you for your time too because it was very very detailed yep right. so there's another someone raised their hand so i think there's one question uh, one of the attendees raised their hand uh, let me let me check sorry to cut you shortly i think there's none <laughs> Yeah, uh, they just wanted to say it's very detailed. It was an awesome talk. Uh, they, they they really appreciate that uh, you've been, you've got through all those details. Of course, that was that was the point. That was to get your money's worth. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that's nice. That's nice of you, Rod. All right, uh, for our attendees uh, again, Rod, thank you. Uh, now I'll be addressing our attendees for our attendees. Uh, we'll be resuming this 1 p.m. Uh, Manila time. Uh, we trust that you all are 
might be peckish already, uh, rooting for a bit of lunch. So we'll let, let you have a break. And then we'll get back uh, by 1 p.m. So I'll see you later. Uh, another announcement, uh, Red Sea Village CTF is still ongoing. So uh, make sure to register if you want to play the CTF.